Mother's Day 2009. A drunk driver came barreling down the seawall in Galveston. The aftermath is a scene Lieutenant Paul Atkins will never forget. I can't imagine how a mother could ever be the same. LaGrace Albert's husband, Tremaine, her 10-year-old son and 3-year-old godson had just finished a day at the beach. As they were loading the car to leave, the uh, husband and two boys were at the back of the car and a vehicle left uh, the main portion of Seawall Boulevard was traveling east and struck the back of the car. LaGrace's husband and the two boys were killed right in front of her. The driver, Oral Speck, was drunk and speeding. Now Atkins had to prove it. Well, we were able to collect the evidence that was uh, left following the collision and, and basically work it backwards. Part of that involves the speed at the time of impact and determining how quickly the driver responds. It's called perception reaction. We naturally have a delayed response even when we're paying attention. Never mind an even slower reaction when drinking. To test out our perception and reaction, I got behind the wheel in this simulation. At the sound of this buzzer, I had to hit the brakes. And I expect you're probably going to be right under a second because we're already taking away your perception. We know what it's going to be and what you're going to do. So really, we're only, in, for the most part, measuring the reaction part. I started to drive. It took about one second to react. In the distance between the buzzer and your foot hitting the brake, it's 46.9 feet. That means the car traveled 47 feet before I even hit the brake. And remember, I was anticipating a stop. Most of the time, we aren't, which adds time. It takes one and a half seconds from the time your mind realizes you need to stop to when you actually start to. So to put it in perspective, if you're going 70 miles an hour, you will travel half the length of a football field before you even hit the brakes. And in good conditions, by the time you actually stop, it would be about 350 feet, or in zone to end zone. Now imagine adding alcohol and speed to that equation, which is what happened in the Mother's Day crash. This is the mathematical equation used to determine the speed. And with data from the car's black box. We were able to clearly show that driving almost double the speed limit and being intoxicated, uh, both of those remove either one of those, and I don't think this crash happens. And that information translates to the courtroom. When they do a reconstruction, they distill all of that information, the math and the printouts and the black box, and it tells the story of what happened. And for us as trial attorneys, um, you know, we need to be able to paint a picture for our juries and for our judges, whoever the fact finder is, to make that determination of guilt or innocence. In this case, Speck was sentenced to 60 years in prison for the deaths of the father and two boys. And with that, troopers just hope you think twice this holiday season before you get behind the wheel. Marla Carter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News.